And the controller of budget actually stated publicly, and this is information that you have, that 2.2 billion has been spent in the office of the president and state house between July and September. If you do that calculation, it means that we spend in that office 23 million per day. Oh my God. And 1 million per hour. That cannot be sustainable. The other day I was reading of somebody threatening Kenyans not to go to court. Kenyans have the right to go to court. And leaders should, political leaders, I wish they were hearing me, should never threaten Kenyans. They are there because we voted. And they are there as servants, not as bosses. I hear now you've moved from Kenya power and lightning to Kenya power and darkness. <laughs> and I even hear now you want to spend billions of shillings to unbundle the power lines. This is corruption after corruption after corruption in a government that looked very Christian. And I remember I told them not to hide in Christianity. Christianity is being men and women of integrity. You cannot use Christ to come to power. And then you, when you get there, you become a corrupt leader. What even saddens me now is when I hear the voice of the church being silenced. Unfortunately, the church seems to be in bed with the government. They can't challenge the government. They have become recipients of government appointments and recognitions. And that is dangerous. So corruption, if you're not careful, will permeate every part of the church. The context in Kenya is becoming even sadder with the weakening of the opposition. While we should be having a very strong opposition by this time to check on the government, it's becoming weaker and weaker, and we can't hear the voice of parliament, but also the schemes that you see to silence people. We have a weak parliament that can be used by the executive to add taxes to Kenyans. When this government was campaigning, they said they are going to reduce taxes. In fact, they were criticizing the then government, which they were part of, because of the high taxation. But today, the load of taxation is becoming heavier and heavier. And this is happening at a time when we hear of cases of grand corruption. So on one hand, you tax people. On the other one, the same government gets into scandals of corruption. For example, the edible oil. What has the government to do with edible oil? Any government project is riddled in a lot of corruption, unfortunately. And then you are told it is not fit for human consumption. Fuel prices are not making sense in Kenya. If you compare with the world, the prices are going down. In Kenya, they are going higher, affecting the lives of the poor Kenyans. Most of the public resources are going into waste, unfortunately. So we hear the cry of our country. The cost of living, the depreciation of the Kenyan shilling against the dollar, which is affecting the prices of most of the commodities because we are net importers. When I hear of that cry, it is very sad. I hear of a ruling class that doesn't seem to care about the depressing situations of this country. Yesterday I listened to a video that you may find it later. And this is the former uh, Chief Justice Maraga. Uh, he's speaking in his church and he's talking about the young people being champions of integrity. Champions of integrity.
And so he gets into a place and he asks, what is your price? What is your price? Could you ask your neighbor, what is your price? When politicians want to use the church to propagate their agenda, they say church and politics is one. When we become very tough on them, they say, no, you do the church things, leave politics to us. I am convinced, as a theologian, I am a politician as well. And politics is talking about the governance of a nation. And the church and church leaders must engage in such. And he was asking this because he was giving a story in Mombasa when he was the judge. And there was a corrupt importation and he gave an order restraining that. And those who were doing that went to his friend who was a lawyer to try and circumvent the process. And the lawyer said, hey, I can't go to Justice Maraga. That guy has no price. That guy has no price. Then the corrupt team said, no, everybody in Kenya has a price. Then the lawyer said, sorry for Justice Maraga. No, no price. Now, let me ask you, can somebody give a testimony about you? Can somebody say, oh, oh, that guy you are sending me to has no price. In other words, you can't buy him. Let me ask you today, and I'm not asking this because the police are here. But I'm asking this to even individual Christians. What is your price? Can you be easily corrupted? When we were doing that building, a politician came to see me. And uh, said, hey, provost, I want to go see what you've been doing here. This looks great. And ask me, how much have you spent by now? And we were almost coming to the end of that building. I said, 700 million. You know what she said? If it was a government project, by now we will have spent 10 billion. And it will still be in the foundations. As your provost then, I used to tell you, I will never allow corruption here. So I wasn't just challenging the government. I was challenging myself as a believer, as a minister of the gospel, but also as a leader. Because you can't challenge others when you can't challenge yourself. This cathedral has been known as a place of agitation. This pulpit has been used by many people in the past, archbishops and provosts, as a place of calling on the government. And that is the role that the church must engage. And this church is very central to that. The people of Israel needed a redeemer. Kenya need redemption as well. And this is so appropriate as we come to Christmas to think about redemption because it's a biblical theme that is important even in our current context. Redemption is a strong movement. In the liberation movement, even in reggae music, redemption is a strong theme. You're wondering, does the former provost listen to reggae? I love reggae. Because reggae talks about the very things that affect people. I listen to reggae. I love the themes within reggae. Because it's about setting free of people. And it's a strong biblical concept. Nowadays, many churches don't like preaching about Isaiah 53. Because it's a weak way of presenting Christ. And modern Christianity doesn't like the idea of the suffering servant. We want, to, we want to have glory without the cross. We want to have the trophy without participating in the race. And we want the, trof, trof, uh, we want the profit before the investment. Many churches now want to make people feel good 
as they leave their 